So I'm still working with these uh, boost converters, and I'd like to be able to check and compare each boost converter and its efficiency to all the other ones on the same, same level uh, playing field with a variety of input voltages and output loads and kind of see the, how each one's efficiency changes under the, under the various input and output conditions. And I'd like to do that the same way uh, for all the load, for all the boost converters that I'm working with. And uh, typically I've been using just my device that I'm going to actually, you know, build uh, as the load. However, if I want to use that data for other projects in the future, I really need to test a little wider range. And again, test them all the same way so that I can see how they work out. So using my uh, wireless node and an Arduino, etc., is not really uh, a precision load. And it's not necessarily as repeatable as I would like. So what we're going to use today is a source meter as the load. Yep, this is what I got a while back, um, and now it's time to put it to use. So what is a source meter? Well, in this case, it's a six and a half digit device, uh, at least from measurement perspective, and it can source voltage and measure another parameter such as current or voltage. It can also source current and measure voltage or power, etc. But something interesting happens with a source meter when you uh, go into, say, sourcing current. You can set a negative number. And what does that do? And that turns this into a high precision load. A source meter is a four quadrant device. It can source current uh, source voltage. It can also act as a voltage or current drain. And that's what we're going to do today as a load. So to demonstrate uh, using this as a load, we have it hooked directly to a power supply. The power supply is turned on and set to uh, 1.5 volts. And it's currently reading 0 milliamps. We have the uh, source meter set to a negative 10 microamps and when we turn it on we can see that the power supply is measuring an output of 13.3 maybe 13.4 microamps of power this is still fairly 3.3 microamp error is, is fairly low if we go to uh, say we go up to 100 microamps and we see that it's still 3.3 3.4 uh, microamp error uh, if we go up again to the one, one milliamp load, we can see that again it's uh, three and a half microvolts, or sorry, microamps in error. So the, the error is probably down here, but we'll confirm that. So with the load set to 10 microamps and the power supply turned on, we can see that the uh, load up here is showing as 9.999 so we've got 10 microamps of load from the source meter even though the uh, power supply is showing uh, an extra 3.3 and 3 .3 microamps and if we go to if we crank that up to 100 microamp again 100 microamp 0 0.000 so very very precise uh, very very precise and stable load here and this is showing another three and a half, three point three microamps of load. Uh, so the error is definitely down, down in the power supply. So we'll take that into account in our measurements. So what is our test setup? It's a power supply connected to a boost converter connected to the source meter. That's it. We're going to walk through uh, to test this in a very stable fashion. I'm going to uh, go through with the power supply. I'll set it to a voltage. I'll vary the load, measure the efficiency, and then uh, record the information down here so, the, so that I can get it all figured out for this device at different input voltages and different loads, check the efficiency across that each range, and finally I'll have uh, consistent information about what I have found as the efficiency of each boost converter. Now I'm using fairly heavy clip leads 
uh, to minimize the losses uh, at even even though I'm only going to be measuring it maybe up to 10 or 50 milliamps of load, I want to minimize the, the voltage losses across this. And I don't really have a lot of short uh, clip leads like that. I probably ought to make up a, a precision set that's where each uh, of the uh, leads is only maybe a, a foot long and 18 gauge or something like that. Just haven't gotten around to that. So we're configured with the power supply feeding the input and the output to the load, the source meter. So for this test I'd like to try it out at a load of one microamp so let's see how that does. Oh, the power supply sort of recognizes it. 90, it switches to 90 microamps. It just doesn't quite pick it up. What if I go to, say, 5 microamps? No, and that's probably because um, the uh, boost converter is drawing short, tiny bursts of power uh, to charge this thing. and Given that I'm only pulling 5 microamps as a load, the uh, output capacitor on this is storing that up, and therefore we're really just getting the, the tiniest amounts of power uh, coming from here. So it's hard to measure this. You can see this going, showing like little pulses of 90 microamps. All right, so let's test it with a more, let's test it with a little heavier load and see if maybe, nope. We're still getting the same, you know, 90 microamps of power. So these things are pretty efficient when we're down in the microamp range. All right, now as we get into the uh, 100 microamps of draw, you, we can see little pulses down in here of it. And we're hovering, we're, we're hovering at 33 to 25 microamps of input current to get a nice steady 3.3 volts out at 100 microamps. To stabilize it, I've set the uh, power supply NPLCs to 10. Might be a little hard to see that on the screen. Sorry. So we're recording now 2.75 microamps Sorry, 200, yeah, 0.275 milliamps for an output load of 100 microamps. <clears throat> we'll have to record that. Now in, let's increase the load to 1 milliamp. And we're pulling at 1 MA 2.572 milliamps. So at 10 milliamps, we're pulling off the load, uh, 25.173 for the source. I'm not sure this little guy will actually do 100 properly. It's 100 milliamp output. Nope, it's, it's not. It fell off. This board can't do the greatest uh, output current. It won't do 100 milliamps but uh, it does 30 pretty well, so I think I'll stop there uh, for my low power measurements. With an, input of an output of 30 milliamps at 3.3 volts, you can see the voltage just dropped off a little bit. Uh, we're at 75 milliamps input. So let's take a look at the numbers. We had a constant 1.5 volts input, and then a, uh, we measured the output power as we uh, ramped up the current use of from the on the SMU at 100 microamps the input was 0.275 milliamps at 1 milliamp the input uh, current was 2.572 and so on so I calculated out the input power for each reading and the output power for each reading and that led to an efficiency level the readings were at 0.1 milliamp, 80.6 percent, so not too bad. At 1 milliamp, 86 percent. At 10 milliamp, 88. At 30, 87. So as you get closer to the top end of a switch mode power supply, it will typically, at least the ones I've been looking at, get into its most efficient range. 
So that's at a 1.5 volt input. Now to do another input voltage, do the range of all the amperage, you know, measure the input amps uh, for each of these uh, load currents and see how it does, all the way down to what I think my dropout voltage would be of about uh, 0.7 or 0.8 volts input. Well, that could take a while. There's got to be a better way. So that's using a Keithley power supply and source meter to measure uh, if the uh, efficiency of a small switch mode boost converter. But it's certainly going to take time if I'm going to do this all manually writing it down. I'm going to take a, a break here and look at uh, what some of the capabilities are of this thing and see if I can come up with some improvements and I'll get back to you in the next video with that.